for stuff, we'll just start with the introductions. <clears throat> okay. Uh, same kind of thing. Hello, I'm Andrew Kotlar. And uh, I'm Luke, well, sorry, you start over. <laughs> Hey, I'm uh, Luke Roberts. <laughs> I'm Luke Roberts. That's uh, Billy. I'm Kotlar, Andrew. No, Billy. you're not even, you're just Billy. I'm Billy. Hello, I'm Andrew Kotlar. And I'm Luke Roberts. And I am the director of the narrative of Henry Winston. What do you Actually, mean? I was looking over there. What, what do you mean? Should we focus on that chair, the like, top part of that chair in the background? Uh, yeah. Okay. Hello, my name is Andrew Kotlar. And I'm Luke Roberts. And I'm the director of Henry Winston. And I did the director for... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Hello, I am Andrew Kotlar. And I'm Luke Roberts. And I'm the director of the narrative of Henry Winston. And I served as director of photography and... Tons other, of other yeah, things. Yeah, other miscellaneous like roles, positions. Way too many names. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it all started uh, back in 2014, actually. October. Um, Late October. I think I, what I pitched the idea to you, uh, or of, of, of collaborating. On yeah, something. yeah. He uh, Luke wanted to uh, collaborate on a on a short film. It was after I think you scored the uh, animation I did. Yeah, Incognificence. So we got together at the uh, um, open door. Yeah, the cop, the open door coffee shop yeah. where where I worked at the time, the and where we actually filmed the first scene of Henry Winston. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, we that was our. For shooting day. So we, we pretty much got together and um, we were we had no idea what we really wanted to do. The the whole reason why we wanted to collaborate, well one of the reasons was because I wanted to make a, uh, a feature length. <laughs> and at that time I had never directed before. So we figured it was probably a good idea to... Uh, yeah, to, to just uh, get your feet wet. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we decided to, you know, meet one day to try and collaborate on a short film, and uh, we just we, you know, kind of decided on something kind of spooky. <laughs> and I, originally, I wanted to go for like ten or fifteen minutes, uh, nothing too long, but uh... it ended up being longer because um, about three months later, by the time I found the house, because it took forever to find it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that I was. was a, I remember, we're like, what are we gonna do? Yeah, I think know, I think didn't we? we we, you had one location in mind. I think that it was in like Huntsburg or past Huntsburg or some somewhere yeah. far away. Kind An of far actual away from abandoned us. house. <laughs> I was thinking of filming in, right. which would be really difficult in January in Ohio. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, one day, my my dad told me that uh, his friend uh, Tom Kangas from uh, from his high school days, um, you know, lived out in Montville, and he has uh, had an older uh, styled house. And I came by, and there was uh, Tom Kangas and uh, and. Uh, Tammy, and uh, we both met them, and they both uh, super great people. Yeah, really, really nice people. Just, um, yeah, just super hospitable, and so I, uh, you know, I met them, and I saw the house, and <laughs> that house was so you fell awesome. In love. Yeah, I fell in love with the house, and I called Luke up, and I said, we cannot make this an, uh, like a over the weekend project, which is what we were hoping to do with it at the time. I was like, we need to spend some more time on this, at least two to three weeks filming. Alone, at least. You know, at that point in time, we had already filmed a couple scenes. Uh, we had pretty much filmed everything that we could film without the house. So I'm looking at this place, and it's just so beautifully um, preserved to look, you know, like just an older style. It's like an old, which old is farm what house, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It had a nice portion of land back there. Um, yeah, he and and Tom actually was in a way restoring it to, yeah. to, to keep it in that, that same kind of time period. Right, because uh, it, it was in bad shape. Uh, he showed his photos, it, yeah. was, it was pretty. Uh, he, he made it real nice, yeah. I actually <laughs> wrote the script in two days. Yeah, yeah you... we, we came up with the concept at the, ca at the coffee shop. Pretty much the, the, the story frame idea in the beginning was um, a kid in the 50s um, who kind of uh, had a, who had a friend, and uh, they were kind of uh, exploring this haunted house together, which you know, in that in that in itself kind of changed a little bit when uh, it turned out that he actually lived at the house. But then we figured, you know, why don't we make a little bit of a twist in it? Turn out that you know, uh, make it the, so the one, one character was actually the ghost or something like that. Well, one of the uh, so yeah, that was pretty much the the beginning idea, and then I I went home and immediately started writing, and uh, two days later I called Luke up and said I'm done, <laughs> let's start filming. <laughs> yeah, I, th well, I think we went over, <laughs> took out like a couple lines. Yeah, I think I, I I got one line in there, just you know, just cause. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so pretty much what we had um, for the cast actually ended up being the actual actual cast. Um, Luke knew 
of at least most of the people. I was really yeah. the one who actually did the casting pretty much and really got a hold of them. I, I had originally, for Harry, I actually wanted Connor Brennan to do it. Um, I didn't know if he was interested in film at that time. You know, uh, he was still fairly new to the theater, uh, the GLTG, which is where I uh, know a lot of my actors. So. No! No! I wasn't sure if he was interested in film because it's it's kind of funny, you know, people who work on stage you know, are super charismatic and, and, and funny and stuff like that, but when they go in front of a camera, they become a completely different person a lot of times. They become extremely shy, uh, so it's just, which is kind of weird. It's sometimes kind of hard to find someone who likes doing both. And luckily, Connor was, was one who liked doing both. So, yeah, he uh, kind of took it uh, hands-on. and He seemed to really enjoy it. Yeah, like, yeah, he did. Based on the feedback he, he gave me. Yeah, and you know he I mean, he knew Jonathan Klein too. Oh, okay, which yeah. Jonathan Klein you know John. was was um, you know he he did a lot with the filmmaking, but he was also one of the one of the cast members. He uh, he played yeah. uh, Ricky, the the bartender. Ricky Ricardo. Ricky Ricardo, Lucy, I'm home. Yeah, so Jonathan Klein was one of the other like immediate ones that I wanted. <laughs> he just struck me as the young cheery bartender. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah, John John did a great job with with the part. Um, he did exactly what I wanted. Everyone in the in the in the Henry Winston actually had acted on the stage before. She's doing that. Tom Robbins which was, uh, I was so happy I got him. He was one of the ones I was nervous, wasn't gonna be able to accept it just because, you know, scheduling or. Uh, he was, he was, a, he was a trooper too. Yeah, but Tom Robbins, uh, I don't know, he just, he just fit the character so well. And uh, his, <laughs> his voice, it was perfect for the narration, which was, you know, very key in this entire film. So, you know, it was um, really um, refreshing to, to have someone with a really nice narrative voice. Yeah, yeah, so uh, Wilson. Let's talk about Wilson for a moment. <laughs> um, okay, I had originally had another actor li lined up to play uh, Henry Winston, and um, you know we didn't really leave on bad terms or anything. It just it just didn't work out. Uh, he was super super busy, you know? and uh, he he hoped that he could do it. And we actually did film one scene, which was the. Um, the opening scene exploring um, just the, the town that, that Wilson lived in. Uh, we actually had him um, there and yeah. do all the same shots actually. And um, the kind of the deciding factor when we realized that it just wasn't gonna work out with him was when we did the uh, the microfilm scene. Right. <laughs> yeah, cause um, if you actually notice, okay, there's this one shot uh, that's looking directly at the microfilm reader and uh, you see Wilson, you know, cranking the thing, uh, the lever and uh, you know, all the pages are going by. And uh, that turned, that's actually- Luke. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so he wasn't able to make it that day and that was the only day I was able to actually film there uh, with the actual microfilm that I needed because I actually was only able to have the microfilm uh, for, uh, what was it, about five hours, I think. It, it, we had to kind of think out of the box yeah, I, had, I had a lot of shots lined up showing Wilson, you know, so, um, you know, at that so, point I kind of realized, you know, when he was, wasn't able to make it, um, I just figured it was probably a better idea that I uh, took on the role because I didn't have to work around someone else's schedule. It would just make things a little bit easier. Obviously, for my job, it would make things a little bit yeah. tougher, kind of multitasking, but... Pulled know, it off, I think. Yeah, Acting-wise, it's kind of a little bland, so, yeah. But I, I was focusing more on the directing than the acting, which I, I'm glad I did. I'm, that's definitely something I was happy I did. Okay, so yeah, my first uh, experience as a director was quite hectic. <laughs> uh, the first day of filming was uh, at the cafe. But we got there at six o'clock ish. Yeah, yeah. It took forever, uh, forever. And we finished filming at four a.m. Yeah. I worked with Jonathan Klein a lot. Is that why you killed him, dog? Because it was just another great guy trying to make it through this dark world. Look, I, I didn't kill nobody. We had finished filming at this point pretty much the uh, uh, his feature length film, The Tale of the Sparrow. Jonathan was the mastermind. I, I pretty much was uh, co the accomplice, co something of quite a few things, but really just a supporting person, just kind of just doing whatever I can to get it done because uh, I thought it was a really cool idea. And um, through that experience, I think I got a lot of knowledge on just how to direct, I guess, and uh, also how to edit because I literally would just watch John edit down the scenes and stuff like that. Yeah, um, on the kind of the lighting side of things, we, we John brought some lights, which was great. And mind you, I owned none of the equipment um, for 
most of the time. Um, I literally borrowed the camera, the lighting equipment, uh, tripods, uh, audio equipment. So style, um, I suppose for, for Henry Winston, uh, I love the fisheye lens, especially when we were up by the, the room that uh, the, the friend is supposedly trapped in. I was kind of going for, um, as, as we got deeper into the house, the more fisheye we used, the more bent and distorted it kind of looked yeah. almost, I feel like. And sometimes it's easier because it, since it's so wide, you can, you can handheld it a little bit. And it, it, yeah. It was kind of a convenience thing once in a while. Too, yeah, uh, we, were, we were in a rush a couple times, so we went completely handheld with the fisheye, which actually looked really great in the dark. But a lot of times, you know, we, we worked with very minimal lighting, especially upstairs. It was very dark. We worked with candlelight and flashlights. Especially in the scene where um, uh, Wilson is trying to get in the room and uh, Harry is telling him, telling him not to. Um, that whole scene is lit by flashlights. Pretty much what we had is we had a flashlight and uh, we had reflectors. Pretty much the flashlight would bounce uh, off of the reflector and uh, we'd angle it so it would actually reflect back up into our eyes to make it feel like that the flashlight is lighting up way more than it actually is. And action. Take two. Ah, darn it. Let's do that again. Just keep rolling. All right. Right, you got it. Yeah, so pretty much what I did was, you know, I wrote the script and then later on when we got ready to finally film that scene is I actually went back in and uh, wrote tons of um, camera shots and angles that I wanted actually to happen at certain points in the in the dialogue and, and just the whole conversations. And actually, I was really surprised that it all worked out. <laughs> yeah. It's usually stuff like planning that meticulously like, doesn't usually work out no and it um, almost didn't we had it, yeah it almost didn't i because uh when i when i first got there i was kind of i was kind of overwhelmed because uh you know i had a lot of people that was probably the day where we had the most people working on set it also added on a certain amount of extra pressure yeah there's like there's <laughs> almost like like you had to, like there's like this professional uh a quality that was expected uh it felt like or, I didn't achieve it, well, especially not you, in the beginning of the night. <laughs> but I think you did it. I think you warmed up as you went. Yeah, I mean that was, that whole first day was just like, yeah, it was it was it was difficult. It was trying to come up with a systematic way to get, get everything done efficiently. Efficiently, yeah. Try like if I had repeat shots um, that we went back to, we would try to do those lines, so then we'd never have to go back back to that camera angle again, uh, which is a good efficient way if you have a script supervisor. Yeah. And we did not. Yeah, we didn't. One thing we, we didn't really plan for was going black and white. Yeah. We didn't shoot because you have to shoot for black and white in a specific way. So we really didn't, but overall I think it worked out. But right. there were so many inconsistencies scene to scene and sometimes even shot to shot that just coloring and just overall quality of grain and stuff like that yeah. just completely changed because we actually worked with uh, Several. Three, three cameras. That was, a, that was a thing as a director that I just didn't uh, account for because I, I just didn't know to account for it. <laughs> uh, so that was one of the struggles there. I say one of the biggest struggles for directing is scheduling. Scheduling is a bear. You know, in real movies, you have a real budget. You pay your actors. In indie films, you don't. And because of that, Ideally, I, I, I don't want to say that they don't care, but, but it's not an obligation for them. Yeah. Luckily, how it was set up, we only needed two actors at a time, and one of the actors was me, <laughs> which made it a little bit easier. But um, so those are so so those were some of the the, the problems I had to uh, deal with. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. So uh, music uh, scoring was was pretty much all me. I mean, I do have to thank uh, a couple of other classical composers for, for, <laughs> for a few things, but uh, I um, yeah. So I was mainly inspired by uh, Bernard Herrmann, uh, the composer for most of uh, Alfred Hitchcock's uh, films, especially Psycho. That was a, that was a major inspiration. Kind of the, the quick string especially for um, the uh, the chase scene uh, in the woods. Not really a chase scene, it's really the fear more, scene. Yeah, more of a panic attack. <laughs> panic, yeah, panic, the panic attack scene in the woods. Um, well, yeah, that was a major inspiration there, but uh, also there was a lot of inspiration from uh, Rachmaninoff. Uh, and uh, I actually ended up using Rachmaninoff in one of the uh, and one of the scenes, uh, the exploration scene throughout the uh, the house, when he uh, when he finds the door open, uh, that's when uh, Rachmaninoff's Isle of the Dead uh, starts uh, starts playing, 
just beautiful song. Yeah. And it was just it makes was, it. I don't know. It brings it to a new level. To me. Not to not to. Say yeah, you're oh, composing. No, no, no. I mean, I I tried composing something for that scene, and it just uh, it fell flat. I, it fell flat. Yeah, and I just kept going back to that to that to that piece, and I was just like, I I just had to use it, and uh, it turned out it lined up like practically perfectly. I had to shave a little bit off the beginning, but um, everything just worked out so well. I didn't want a full orchestra. I wanted um, solo instruments. I didn't want eleven violins playing. I just wanted one, uh, one cello, one you know double bass. Uh, that sort of thing. I used, I used a bassoon as well in some places. Um, now I did go large orchestral in some places, spe uh, especially um, the uh, piece that I, that I call My Friend, uh, which happens uh, when uh, Wilson finally opens the door and uh, finds out that everything's fake. And uh, then there's that whole scene after where, um, where Wilson runs out of the house and uh, that's, that's more orchestral, I suppose. But almost a little uh, fiddle-ish in some ways, um, especially with this one chord. I, ca I, I, I call it the Henry Winston chord because I haven't really heard it anywhere else. Um, it is a F A C sharp F sharp. I believe it is roughly an F augmented flat add nine chord, I believe. There's a really heavy dissonance of an F and an F sharp. They're not right, they're not right oh, next they're not. to each other. Okay. They're actually a full octave apart, oh, which okay. makes it a little more pleasing to the ear. I didn't want it too awful, but um, it's definitely a, a weird chord. You can hear it in, uh, all over the all over the film. So that's pretty much the score. <laughs>
you're going to play chess with me like we've always done. You don't have to go to school anymore. That was probably the longest thing. And uh, I thought Josh did an awesome, awesome job. I mean, yeah. he took unsalvageable audio, threw it away, and then made his own. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty tough to do that. No, no one really prepares for audio that well. No. Sometimes they do, sometimes, no. but generally, no. Yeah, um, I do now. I have learned the error in my ways. <laughs> you know, it finished up um, pretty darn well. I mean, you know, it is my first film, so I, I don't expect everything to be correct. And in some ways, I have lost the ability to care about this film. When you have an idea and then someone, you know, gives the most best creative criticism, you know, you, you feel kind of hurt by it, which uh, hopefully you're able to take that in the, in the best graces as possible. But I don't think I'd care even if someone bashed this film. <laughs> it's been a way too long process. I mean, we started Sometimes this... you just have to move on. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, learn, and learn from your mistakes and yeah. then make something better the next time. That's all you have to do. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we started this in October of 2014 and finished it in 2016, the month of May. Yeah, like a year and a half, yeah. pretty much. Which is way too long for a short film. Way too long. Audio. If audio yeah. was, was great, 100%. this thing would have been done in less than a year. Overall, it was a great directorial debut, in my opinion, and uh, I had a lot of help from uh, Luke, Jonathan, Josh. Yeah, so I mean, it was it was it was fun, challenging, uh, a little stressful, definitely at times, but uh, overall, I think it uh, turned out better than I expected. So that's the narrative of Henry Winston, and uh, kind of a behind-the-scenes look, I suppose, kind of. So I uh, hope you enjoyed and and watch it and like and subscribe and share and all that good internet stuff. So uh, it's Andrew and Luke signing out. Thanks for watching. <laughs>